Hello YouTube. Today we're going to talk about SAS RAID versus SATA RAID and we're going to get into that uh, because there is quite a big difference and I find a lot of technicians don't know this and I thought it would make a great video. Um, so let's get started and take a look. So what do these things each mean? When we talk about SATA, that means serial ATA. Um, ATA was an older hard drive standard uh, that used IDE cables and then they came out with SATA and I was actually started becoming a tech right when it kind of switched over from that um, and I still like I remember my first two years of doing tech support I still was doing a lot of SATA and PETA stuff and PETA is parallel, parallel um, attached ATA. So now SAS is basically the SATA version for servers. SAS means serial attached SCSI. SCSI is the old hard drive um, that used to be used for lots of enterprise servers and SCSI means small computer system interface or something like that. Um, and basically that's a technology that was it's still used in a lot of servers but it's no longer currently being used with new servers. Um, everything is using SAS pretty much now. Um, but SAS is a big thing to understand and so again that's serial attached SCSI. Okay? These are the new type of drives for servers. Now you want to you want to really consider this too when you actually go to set up a RAID array because a RAID array is one of the most important things inside your server. It is the most crucial thing that you understand how this works, how to deal with uh, rebuilding a RAID array when one drive fails, and you really need to make sure you understand this and use the right kind of drives for the right kind of servers. It's really important. You can't just use any drive in a server. It may work, but for an enterprise, you do not want to do this. Um, I'll just give you a case in point. I noticed um, on one of the servers, uh, it's actually one of the senior system events who showed me this, you actually, if you use drives that aren't for the right manufacturer on a lot of our older IBM Lenovo servers, if you use like a, a drive from a Dell or something like that, yeah, it would work, but the drives wouldn't blink proper. So when actually the drive failed, it would still it, it would be solid green instead of blinking green when data was read and write. So obviously that was a problem with the with the drive and the firmware. So there's, it really does matter what kind of drives you use. So you really need to make sure you understand this stuff. So if you're just doing like a home server, like I use for my two home servers that run 24 seven, they're just high performance desktops. So I have two of them and they both, well, actually one doesn't even run right. It's just, a, it's actually um, a 2.5 inch laptop drive I'm using for one of my servers. However, my main server is got two Western digital blacks running in a RAID one, which is a Stripe. Uh, so if one drive fa fails, it just automatically uh, continues to run because all that same information is constantly being mirrored to the other drive. So, you know, Saturate isn't horrible, but when you talk about an enterprise, it's a completely different thing. And, and, and SAS is the way you want to go, um, mostly because of the reliability of the RAID uh, array. I have noticed that Saturate has gotten a lot better, but th that's still it. You'd want to work with only... Um, SAS RAID because it is much much better or if you're using older technology SCSI RAID same thing because these are different and what makes what's the difference between SATA and SCSI RAID well it's basically the type of controller so you need you need to consider this kind of stuff because you know if your RAID array fails later down the road it can cause big problems another thing you have to consider is a RAID 5 array is you know it, it, it's a dangerous thing in my opinion you know lots of people use RAID 5 but you have to consider that if one drive fails, you have a very short amount of time to change the other drive. Because if, if you're in the middle of a rebuild and then another drive fails, like a rebuild is a very write and read intensive process. So if your drives are at the point where they're all about to fail, there's a high chance that another drive in the RAID can fail. And you have to keep in mind, not everybody has only three drives, which is the minimum for RAID 5. Some people might put like 10 drives or 20 drives or maybe up to the maximum of 32 drives in a RAID 5 array because it makes it faster and it gives you more storage. But when you add more drives to a RAID 5 array and it can only handle one failure, you're more susceptible uh, for that failure to happen because now you have a 1 in 30 second chance or a 1 in 20th chance that another drive is going to fail. Um, so it, it's a huge thing that you got to consider as a system admin or as any kind of technician who wants to set something up for somebody. Um, if you're going to go with RAID, you want to make sure that if it's actually on a server, you're using proper RAID technologies. And you don't just want to use any controller. I mean, many times myself when I was still learning Windows Server, I went out and I bought $50 or $100 RAID cards, and they're all garbage. You do not want to do that. 
And they would work fine for like Windows 7 stuff. But as soon as you'd actually try to put server stuff on them, it would just fail. Any kind of like heavy database stuff would just fail. So you really want to make sure you have proper RAID cards too. And you want to make sure also that you can get that same RAID card if the RAID card fails. Because another thing that you have to consider is if the RAID card fails, you need to make sure that you can get another RAID card that exactly matches the same model. Because if you don't, you will not be able to restore your RAID. And even if you do get the same card, that is a really scary scenario. Because it just takes one stupid tech that you send to go do that to not hook up the equipment right. And then suddenly the drives are not plugged in the right place. The RAID array boots up and it doesn't understand the RAID array. And it goes, would you like to make a RAID array? So you need, you need to consider all this kind of stuff and it's not just as simple as many people think um, you know and so you want to make sure you understand that now for the most part another thing I want to talk about is staying away from software raid stay away from it for the most part however I haven't messed around with Linux and LVM too much um, I do use Linux but I haven't messed around with it in that sense so I don't know what the recently anyway I don't know what the what changes have come up since that might be kind of beneficial or better with the software RAID, but I will say this on the Windows side because I do understand Windows very well. Uh, storage spaces is very different than what we considered software RAID in you know, disk management. It is completely different. It is faster. It is more reliable. And this is what enterprise um, virtualization um, data centers use is things like storage spaces so I need you guys to take a look at that and really consider that when you guys actually implement your structure maybe you guys don't want to rely on read cards you can just have all your storage attached you can use SANS you can use NAS devices and you can actually make like a really fault tolerant um, system using storage spaces and hot spares and different things like that so I hope you guys like my video please subscribe and uh, until next time have a great day I'm <laughs> sorry.